A popular new podcast is bringing to light the abuses suffered at a fertility clinic at Yale. Lisa Desjardins has our conversation. The podcast series is called The Retrievals, and it probes a story with many layers, including how women can be ignored in medicine and how they can doubt their own experiences. At the center is a fertility clinic at Yale University. In 2020, a nurse there secretly replaced vials of an opioid used to reduce pain during egg retrievals with saline solution. That meant the women felt the entire procedure, some describing excruciating agony, while the clinic downplayed or ignored their cries. Susan Burton is the host of The Retrievals and reported this series for The New York Times and Serial Productions. Susan, thank you for joining us. The nurse involved, named Donna Montecone, she worked very closely with these women, but all the time she was stealing fentanyl to feed her own addiction. Still, she was watching these women, allowing these women to be in pain, and not only that, she was gaslighting them. Here's what one of the women you talked to told you. Next thing I remember is waking up in the recovery room um, and I was in quite a bit of pain, a lot more pain than I ever would have expected for an egg retrieval. Um, and Donna was my nurse and I remember asking her if it's normal to be in that much pain and she looked at me and said yes. What did these women actually go through versus what were they being told? Sure. So first of all, Lisa, thank you so much for having me. So the women were undergoing a procedure called an egg retrieval, where eggs are removed from the body and then either fertilized or frozen, depending on what you're doing. Uh, the clinic set an expectation that the women might experience moderate discomfort with this procedure. But what they described to me was feeling severe, unexpected pain, either during or after the procedure. And, you know, in the absence of accurate information about what happened to them, right, because the nurse was, was keeping a secret that she was stealing fentanyl, many of the women blamed themselves or thought this is just what women go through. And many of the women that you talked to, most of them, in fact, did end up having children. However, their experience is still being dismissed. Here's what another one of the women told you about that. After I delivered, I went in for my six week postpartum visit to meet with my doctor. And um, it somehow came up in conversation that I, you know, was part of this suit that was going on. And she looked at me and she said, well, what's the big deal? I mean, you ended up pregnant. You have such command of choice of wording throughout this podcast and you call that kind of thing an act of erasure. What did you learn about the way medicine sees pain in women and especially pain that might be related to having children? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that was so interesting about this series was the way that pain had been normalized around this egg retrieval procedure at this clinic. I came to see the fact that doctors and nurses at this clinic, you know, it, it almost expected that patients would feel some pain. That was one of the reasons that the nurse was able to hide what she was doing for so long. And when we talk about pain being ignored, you know, we often think of like going to a doctor and saying, I'm feeling this pain and the doctor dismissing us, but not treating pain adequately in the first place is, is another way of dismissing pain, another way of saying, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And you believe that that's particular to them being women? I think that women's pain is definitely, you know, dismissed um, and treated differently than, than men's pain. And that has to do with historical and cultural expectations around women as patients, that we are hysterical, that we are unreliable narrators of our own symptoms. Now, the nurse involved here did, was sentenced ultimately to eight days in prison. Uh, she did also surrender her nursing license. Uh, now, you were not able to speak to her on the record nor anyone around her. How did you go about balancing her story? She has her own addiction story that she presented in court with that of the other women. That was a very complicated question for me as a reporter and a storyteller. And ultimately, what I decided to do was the nurse herself told her own story in court documents, and her friends and family told their own stories about what happened to the nurse also in court documents in character reference letters they wrote to the judge. So that was that was the storytelling that I was able to do to, you know, 
to, to allow her to explain what, what happened from her perspective. And what was her story? She told a story that involved a lot of conflict in uh, with her ex-husband and um, a lot of stress around his caretaking of the children. Uh, and it ultimately ended up being really thematically relevant to the series because what happened was at her criminal sentencing, part of the reason she received such a light sentence was that the judge was taking her status as a mother into consideration. If the nurse had gone to prison, her ex-husband likely would have gotten custody of the children. This was a very painful irony for many of the patients who were observers for this because, of course, they were at this clinic because they wanted to have children, have become parents, become mothers. Since the podcast aired, who have you heard from? Of course, yeah. I mean, this podcast has really hit a nerve. I've heard from hundreds of listeners, um, not only fertility patients, but just patients who've had all kinds of experience of unacknowledged or inadequately treated pain in medical settings, ranging in age from teenagers to women in their 70s, pain from inadequate pain from IUD insertions, birth trauma all kinds of things. Hmm. Susan Burton, thank you for the many layers that you looked at in this podcast. We appreciate you. Thank you, and thank you for having me.